Alright, you two. Jack of all trades here. Remember, master of none. Heater update time. Well, <clears throat> we've done quite a bit here since our last video. We um, got a water separator installed now. So we go from our fuel tank directly into a large water separator. This is actually for a um, like a gas pump system that you'd have on your farm like a fuel barrel. I got it at, um, well, I got it right there. And uh, they had a really good price on it. Um, they sold them for biodiesel. They sold them for uh, a couple of different things. And they're supposed to have this filter insert inside there to filter your fuel. Well, <clears throat> I just bought the cheaper one that was for diesel fuel because the filter is a cheaper filter. So the overall cost was down. Uh, the biodiesel link was 60. This was, I think it was like 23 or 27 or something. But I just took this out. Don't use it. Set it off to the side. We got 3 8 line coming in. Adapting it to our 1 inch fitting. We actually go from 3 8 to 3 quarters to the 1 inch adapter. And then uh, this is all oil as you can see. And we can just drain our water off right here on the bottom. And then we go 3 8 all the way down. Here's one change that we also made. We went from our quarter to our 3 8 line. And now our needle valve's down here. The 3 8 line has the ability to drain out. Where before our quarter inch line we could have the needle valve at the top and it didn't matter. We could see immediate adjustment down at the drip at the other end. With the 3 8 you can't do that. <clears throat> so we um, moved our needle valve down here. We actually had an issue with uh, runover because we had that needle valve at the other end. We make our adjustment. Didn't see anything take place, thought nothing was going to happen, walked away, and here it was too much and it filled the heater completely full and it ran out on the floor. There's still actually kind of a stain there from the oil, hot oil getting on the floor. So, as a precaution, now we keep uh, a little floor dry against the back there and um, works as a barrier if we were to have a runover event. We could um, just start keeping some of the oil off of the wall. But um, <clears throat> we also took and put in some fire retardant on the wall here. I'll back up a little bit so you can uh, get a better look. To uh, protect the wall and keep the wall cooler. We also, and our, here's our biggest improvement, is we went from our four inch chimney to a six inch chimney. And we put in a class A chimney that goes outside. It's a stainless triple wall system, so um, has the most fire retardant setup that uh, I could get in there. Um, we had to tear the whole wall apart here and uh, put a header in because we had studs in the way. Actually, um, I didn't do this part. Actually, um, DRC did this part, DRC Construction, and uh, they did an excellent job. So we uh, were up to par and. Um, we got a header in the wall there, supporting the wall. Everything is correct the way it should be. And um, we uh, got our fire retardant on there. So we started out this experiment hoping to find out what was the most efficient. And on our way, we found that, um, well, you kind of have to give up efficiency to get a clean burn. Um, and the name of that game is Velocity. To get that, if you know anything about a, uh, I believe it's a Babington style oil burner, um, those inject air and atomize fuel at the same time to uh, get a very clean burn. To get that effect to happen, you need a lot of velocity or a lot of draft. <clears throat> so we um, upgraded to the six inch pipe. As you can hear, we've got a natural roar taking place that um, we uh, now get and we get an extremely clean burn. We um, had a problem with um, light soot getting, you know, having to clean the heater often, um, having light soot in the chimney and um, if the heater was tuned wrong, if the fuel rate was wrong, then you had a problem with outputting soot out the chimney out the other end. Um, so we had to, which makes a mess, so we had to upgrade our chimney to a larger diameter, got our velocity up, but every time we went to a bigger chimney we found that we lost 
some efficiency, we had to put more fuel in the heater to get the same amount of heat output out of the heater, but in turn, every time we did that, we were able to get the unit to operate cleaner. So, <clears throat> we um, have no smell in the shop whatsoever from this unit running. Um, people ask that, oh geez, you know, it's got a stink in there. No, nope, you can't even smell it. You don't, you don't know that it's actually operating unless you spill oil on it. Um, and then starting it, I had some questions on that. Um, very simple, I just pour a little bit of gas with a little bit of used oil in the fry pan and I light it with a torch and up it goes. So, very simple. And then uh, <clears throat> the last thing that we have learned we must not have our tuning just perfect because we get what I like to call the Chernobyl effect. And for some reason, the heater starts very slow. And if you get too much oil in the pan, or get a lot of oil in the pan, um, and you cut back on your fuel inlet, and you slow your drip rate down, you end up having the heater, it's like it overruns itself. It um, goes into meltdown mode where it gets extremely hot and it burns all that excess oil back out of the pan until it's down fairly low again and then it will tame itself down. Now, and it's kind of a pendulum deal there. It's either wide open or not when it gets in that mode. That's why I call it the, the Chernobyl effect. So. What do we currently use as a consumption rate? Well, we did some math. On the high side, we are about where everybody else said they would be. We're about a quart an hour, and that's about what we're running right now is about a quart an hour, which comes out to be about six gallons a day, which comes out to be, if you left the heater on all the time, uh, that's about 180 gallons a month. Here, I have to heat for about five months out of the year, so that's r roughly 900 gallons for the year. So not very efficient on fuel consumption, but um, we had to give up fuel or our um, efficiency to get it to burn clean and correct. So getting it to burn clean was the most important first. Now, if you wanted, you could probably reverse engineer this thing and take this down to a four inch or a three inch diameter, get a smaller fire fry pan, smaller rotor, smaller combustion chamber altogether, miniaturize it, and then go to a smaller chimney and match that chimney. Remember, this is a six inch pipe here, and it's six inch on the top now, and now I finally got it to where it runs real optimal. But um, <clears throat> to downsize this is gonna be a lot more work. I'm gonna have to build a whole other unit again. But um, we're not sure where we're gonna go with this from here, but this is our biggest update to the heater yet. It works really well. We get a lot of heat from it. Um, a ridiculous amount of heat out of the unit. But um, to get it to burn clean we had to um, give up our efficiency. So if you're planning on building one of these I hope you have a Jiffy Lube or two in your back pocket. Thanks YouTube.